case you've not seen it taking over the internet, there's this new artificial intelligence tool called ChatGPT. Basically allows you to pretty much type in anything, ask it to this AI, and it spits out a comprehensive, intelligent answer that is powered by tons and tons of research backed by the internet. So my first question when I saw this tool naturally was, can it make us better photographers? So I asked this AI to recommend me 10 photography mistakes that all beginners make, and my oh my did it deliver. The AI said, not understanding the exposure triangle. This refers to the relationship between aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, which are the three main factors that determine the exposure of a photograph. Understanding how these three factors interact can help you take better exposed photos. 100% without a shadow of a doubt, this is important. It's number one. It seems like almost it's number one for a reason. I don't actually know whether the AI was actually considering that fact, but this is extremely important. It is a cornerstone of photography. You need to make sure your photograph is exposed correctly. And that is the understanding between the relationship between ISO, shutter speed, uh, and aperture. Those are the three manual camera controls that we get control of when you shoot with a camera. Obviously, aperture is how wide your lens is open, shutter speed is how fast your shutter is actually going, and then ISO is the sort of digital interaction between those two and how sensitive your camera is actually to that light. And that's when you're artificially boosting it. If you go really high, you'll introduce artificial grain and artificial noise in your photo. And that's a caveat of adding that artificial light in. Number two, shooting in auto mode. While auto mode can be convenient, it can also limit your creative control over the final result. Experimenting with different shooting modes and manual settings can help you achieve the look and feel you want from your photos. This is a massive one. Auto's not always going to be able to help you get the shot. And there are a few caveats here, because for instance, yesterday, a couple of these reference photos, or actually most of the reference photos you are seeing during this video, I took yesterday in London, a trip to just a little photo trip to London. And there were times where I was actually shooting in auto. And for, you know, I am a professional photographer. I don't need to shoot in auto, but with the caveat that sometimes auto is going to be able to figure out things faster than you can uh, behind your camera. So if you're in a very challenging situation, maybe you're going from uh, extreme light to dark, and it might take you 20 seconds to figure out your exposure naturally, shooting in auto can be really useful. Overwhelmingly though, I do shoot in manual or one of the other priority modes. Manual is extremely useful. For instance, these shots here that I was extremely happy with uh, from the Natural History Museum in London. Uh, if you haven't been, absolutely amazing place to visit. And um, you can see that uh, these were long exposure photographs. So I didn't have a tripod with me, but I just set my camera down. Um, and you'll be able to see that it basically enormously leveled up these photos, being able to capture the long exposure, you get the people rushing underneath. I was really pleased with these photos and that wouldn't be possible within auto mode. Number three, not using a tripod. A tripod can help stabilize your camera and reduce camera shape, which is especially important when taking photos with a long shutter or in low light. This is the one point I didn't quite agree with the AI on. Whilst I do think obviously it's extremely important to be able to use a tripod and they're an essential bit of kit for pretty much any photographer, this almost makes out that you want to uh, shoot with a tripod a lot of the time. I actually shoot with a tripod very, very rarely. Um, I do it for interior Areas. Um, those couple of shots that I showed you earlier from the Natural History Museum, uh, I had to set my camera down, but obviously I would have been able to get a better framing if I had used a tripod in that situation. I don't want people to feel like they have to go out and lug a tripod around the entire time that they're shooting, uh, but of course they are an essential bit of kit for certain shots. Not framing the shot. Taking a moment to think about the composition of your photograph can make a big difference in the final result. Consider the placement of your subject, the background, any leading lines or patterns that can help guide the viewer's eye. I'm actually going to combine this one with the next point from the AI that was not using the rule of thirds. This can help create balance and visual interest in the photograph. These kind of felt very similar, like one point to me, but I think composition, this is obviously something which takes years to develop and get good at. I could go out and shoot with one of my friends and the compositions that they're able to get are entirely different from the compositions that I would be able to get myself. You know, I am a working uh, professional photographer composition is something which I can definitely improve on and continually get better at. The rule of thirds is also super interesting. The, the idea of placing a subject on one of the intersecting lines is obviously a kind of a bit of a cornerstone staple within photography. This is a relatively simple idea of composition. But then you, of course, can get even more advanced compositions. Uh, you could have things like dirty frames where um, you're having somebody obscure certain elements of your photograph. There's a whole bunch of different composition options and really,
really the only thing that you can improve upon this is just by going out and practicing, maybe studying, having a little look at different compositions. But of course, the main thing that is going to improve your composition work is practice. One thing I absolutely love about these tips from this AI is that none of them talk about gear. I think we do specifically get quite kind of bogged down in our camera gear. And it's very important to remember that really the most important thing are your skills. I'm super excited that Skillshare actually wanted to sponsor this video here on the channel because as we head into 2023, there's literally never been a better time to level up your photography or pretty much anything else you might want to learn. Specifically talking about gear, obviously the best camera is sometimes the one you have on you. This course right here from Dave McManus is a fantastic guide to start taking photos with your smartphone that look like they were taken by a professional. The best part about this is it's actually not going to cost you anything. The first 1,000 people that sign up using the link in the description are going to get a month free access to Skillshare and you can watch an unlimited amount of courses within that month. So you can hit that link below to become a better photographer today for free. Skillshare is something I am genuinely really passionate about. I absolutely love promoting products and tools and services that I genuinely use in my everyday life. I've used Skillshare a whole bunch of times. I think learning through the internet is an exceptional thing and Skillshare is a one-stop shot to be able to do that. Thank you to Skillshare for supporting the channel. Number six, not paying attention to the background. Try to avoid cluttered or distracting backgrounds or use them to your advantage if they help tell the story of the photo. Again, this is another one related to composition and it's extremely, extremely important. I'm showing a few shots here that I was using the background uh, in and amongst to really tell the story of these photos. I was using uh, a combination of shooting the foreground subjects here, focusing on the foreground subjects whilst I was just out shooting street photography, but also focusing on that background occasionally as the main subject of the photograph. I was really, really pleased with some of these images. I think they're really interesting. It's obviously very Christmassy here in the UK. Harrods, one of the most famous department stores in the country. And I think the background is essential to these photographs. And I think actually thinking about your background really is important sometimes, obviously depending on the shot that you're trying to get. Not using a flash. A flash can be a useful tool for filling in shadows and illuminating dark areas, especially in low light conditions. However, it's important to use it sparingly and avoid over lighting the scene. Now I'm going to go on record here and say I hate flash photography. I will always avoid using flash when I can. And that's because I tend to shoot in relatively candid situations. I don't do a lot of studio work where, of course, things like flash are, uh, of course, essential. They help you shape light. I'm not going to suggest that shooting with flash is a bad thing all of the time. Uh, but I think for the type of work that I do, I will always avoid using flash where I can. When there is no more available light, a flash is a very, very good way to interact with your subject. It's sometimes essential for events like weddings or maybe you're shooting in just a dark, dingy environment. Of course, you need a flash. This is not bad advice at all. I would stress on that point that the AI has already said, use the flash sparingly, don't overuse it and learn when is the right time to use it. Eight, not using negative space. Negative space refers to the areas around and between the main subject of a photograph. Including negative space in your compositions can help draw the viewer's attention to the subject and create a sense of balance and simplicity. This is a super useful one and I'm actually going to steal a few photos from online here uh, because they will best illustrate how to use negative space in your photos. And a negative space is something, for instance, that street photographers use a whole bunch because it is a fascinating way to show uh, and tell a story within a photograph. I think sometimes when you're shooting something, go and ask yourself, does this need to be in the photo? Is there a way of framing it so that maybe it's slightly more interesting if you reframe uh, and include some negative space on the other side of the photograph? Uh, this, again, is something that will be improved through practice. Not using leading lines. Leading lines are visual elements that draw the viewer's eye through the photograph and towards the subject. These can be natural lines such as a road or river or man-made lines such as the edge of a building or a fence. This is something I do all the time and especially if you are doing street photography, you will have a lot of opportunities to use leading lines inside your images. Uh, this could be as simple as this railing within this shot here. Um, this was a very, very easy way to help guide the viewer's eyes towards the subject who is this person uh, behind the fence here. But obviously you can shoot leading lines kind of, you know, in whatever situation you can. Again, this is another composition thing and the best way to practice this is through experimentation. Number 10, not experimenting. Photography is an art form and one of the best ways to improve is to experiment with different techniques and styles. Don't be afraid to try new things, take risks with your photography, you never know what you might discover. We just take a second that that was written 
by artificial intelligence. Like it is moderately scary, uh, but on the other side, kind of quite wonderful at the same time. It is an enormous takeaway from this video. I think if you can go away with anything, it's to go out and shoot. I don't get an enormous amount of time just to go and shoot for myself nowadays. So for instance, I did it yesterday in London. I went out and um, shot for a few hours, uh, get, ended up getting a ton of photos that I was really, really happy with. I did that on my new Sony a7 IV. If you're interested why I just switched to Sony from Canon, you can check out this video here.